Hey there, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here today. I am Pastor Josh Pontius coming to you from Community of Grace Lutheran Church right here in Peoria, Arizona. And we have reached the exciting conclusion of our message series on mission and vision. And we have uh, talked about what hasn't changed. We've talked about how we gather. We've talked about how we grow. And now we get to talk about going. How do we go? How do we go out into the world to, to do this thing uh, called faith and church out in the world? Now, there are a lot of messages that pastors just don't love to give. There's something that they struggle with, uh, they don't like talking about. There's always topics that all of us struggle with. Uh, some of us uh, really don't like to talk about giving and money. Some of us don't like to talk about uh, hot button issues in the world, uh, immigration and poverty. Some pastors don't like to talk about money. Some people don't like to talk about marital sin, and some pastors don't like to talk about money. If you caught that, you may have found out one of the things that I sometimes uh, struggle with uh, talking about the most, but none of that matters right now because I love, 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 love this week's topic. We've been working through this series on uh, mission and vision over these past couple weeks, and there's been kind of an undercurrent uh, to the topics, and there's always been this aspect of go that kept showing up in the other two, in the gather and the grow. Because the truth is, gather and grow aren't just two co-equal parts in this three-part thing, with the, the go component being the third one. The truth of the matter is we gather and we grow so that we can go. That's the whole point. Put another way, the going is the whole point of the things that we do here. It's the whole point of our Christian walk. It's the whole point of following Jesus, not just to leave it here or leave it online in spaces like this one, but to go out into the world. And I love it. Like I said, I love this topic of going. Now, one of the terms that gets thrown around in the Bible and in churches a lot is, is the term apostle. And it's used to refer to these people in the, in the New Testament, the term for these people who, who followed Jesus in Jesus's life but then also continued to carry that story, to bring that story into the world, carry that story of that good news of the resurrection to the world. And the term apostle, just, it just means sent ones, the ones who are sent out. In other words, they are the ones who go. And it's a term that works for those saints of old, those people, those characters in the New Testaments. It's a term that works for me, and it's a term that works for you. Anyone who has heard the story of what God has done in the person of Jesus, we get to be apostles. We get to be the sent ones. We get to be the one who goes. And what it means to go has lots of different layers and, and different meanings. There's lots of different ways that we go and, and use and share and proclaim our faith. And, and going, it, it looks different for each of us. And, and sometimes uh, we're called to it in different ways. And, and part of that is going out into the world and telling the story of our own faith. How this powerful story has impacted our lives, how it has transformed us and, and how it changes us. That's one of the things we do when we go. Going also means stepping into places that make us kind of uncomfortable. Places with refugees and with immigrants. Places filled with prisoners. Either prisoners of our justice system or prisoners of their own mistakes and their own flaws and the prisons that they've made for themselves. Going into those places, that's one of the ways that we go. Going also means standing up for what is right when we see people who are being dehumanized, when we see people who are uh, taken down and brought down. And going means standing up for the lost and for the lonely and for the broken. Going means bringing life and light into places where there is only death and darkness and bringing life and light into places and to people who are so regularly pushed away, set aside and said, you're not worthy, you're not going out. You're not good enough. Going means telling the world about who God is and who God loves. That's everybody, even when it may cost us our own well-being, our own reputations. This highlighted section of Matthew's gospel we're going to get to in this next couple minutes is one of my top five verses, uh, sets of verses in all of Scripture. I read it 
all the time. And I think it's one of the most critical to our standing of what it means to be a Jesus follower because we're called to do all of those kinds of goings. But this last one that we're going to talk about here in just a minute is one that Jesus followers often really, really struggle with. It's one that we really uh, find one of the hardest ways to go. It's about going out into the world and not just telling our own story of faith, but inviting and encouraging others to take part in this faith, to, to learn about God and to experience God, to tell not just our story, but the story, the story of good news for all of creation, and to invite those people who don't yet know the story into places like this one, where they can be told the story in a new way and get excited about who God is and what God's love has already shown for us. And so from Matthew's gospel in the 28th chapter, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. I, I love this one. I love this section of Matthew's gospel. It is absolutely one of my favorites. I love to read it, uh, but I don't always love to preach it sometimes. Sometimes it is a little bit of a struggle, but why, you asked? Oh, I'm so, so, so glad you had that question. You see, especially here, we, we believe, we preach, we proclaim, we teach each and every week, or at least we try to, this radical idea that there is nothing that we can ever do to save ourselves, that there is nothing we can do that will make God love us more. There's nothing that we can do that we can somehow guarantee our spot in heaven or guarantee that God loves us, that, it, that it's not about what we do. We, we really uh, don't talk a lot about what we have to do. It's just not something that's a part of our DNA. Those things make us uncomfortable. And yet there's tons of examples all throughout Scripture where Jesus says to us, hey, if you're my follower, if you're my disciple, if you're one of my sent out ones, there's just a list of things that you're supposed to be doing. And they're not suggestions. Love your God, not a suggestion. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's not a suggestion. Uh, care for the sick and for the needy. That's not a suggestion. Give without expecting in return. That's not a suggestion. Treat outsiders, the foreigners coming in, as honored guests. That's not a suggestion. And the list kind of goes on and on. And it makes some of us feel a little uncomfortable when we know that there's nothing we're supposed to be doing to earn God's love. And this one, this going into the world, making new disciples, teaching them the story, creating new Jesus followers with our story and our abilities, it's not a suggestion either. Not only is it not a suggestion that Jesus makes, not only is it something that he really tells us we're supposed to be doing, it actually might be one of the most important and defining uh, commands that Jesus gives to his disciples and to us. You see, when Jesus tells this instruction to his disciples to go and make disciples, to baptize them all, all, all over the earth, the cross has already happened. Easter has even already happened. Jesus is spending a precious few moments in that little bit of time uh, between the resurrection and his return to heaven, imparting um, some last-minute uh, wisdom, some information, and some instructions to his disciples. And this call to baptize, this call to make disciples, to go out to all of the earth and to teach them to do everything that Jesus says, it's literally the last thing that Jesus says before returning to heaven. Now, I got to ask you, if you only had literal moments left on this earth, would you waste them, waste that breath, those last few words on something trivial? I, I don't think so. I don't think Jesus is just saying, oh yeah, and by the way, this thing that we're doing, it's kind of important, like a PS at the end of a long letter. 
I don't think that's what Jesus is about. If this is his last instruction to his disciples, I think it's something that we got to take really, really seriously. Now, a lot of our Christian friends in different parts of the Christian family tree, uh, really, they do take this seriously. Um, but they take the part about going out and making new, new disciples and getting them into a church, kind of like this one, and baptizing them and then, then calling it done. They're really interested in uh, what they believe helps aid to salvation. And, and the, the, their only purpose is to bring people to Jesus so that they have faith, so that they're saved, and then that's the end of the story. The point of, the sto- the point of this instruction for them is to just get new conversions. But I think Jesus leaves a really important uh, instruction inside of this that so many people forget. That part about teaching those new people, those newcomers to the church, those newcomers to the faith, to do the things that Jesus has commanded them to do. So that whole big list of not suggestions, that's the part that we are called as people of faith to help impart and teach to people who are new. We're called to make disciples We're called to make new Jesus followers. We're called to invite people into this incredible relationship with the one who has already created and loved us all so that they can learn best how to love their God and love their neighbor. So that we can teach them so that they can learn how to lift up the lowly, how to bring in the marginalized and the outcast, how we can welcome and give outrageous hospitality to the stranger. We're called to teach people to bring down structures of power that treat people as unworthy of love, and of respect. Being a Jesus follower means we're called not to just sit in places like these ones or in our homes viewing online, but we're called to go out and not keep this incredible story to ourselves. It means having conversations with people that make us nervous or uncomfortable. It means sharing our faith with strangers. It means that we sometimes have to risk some of our relationships and risk some of our comfort to share the story because the people that we bring it to, they may not receive it well. Maybe it's just because they're from another tradition or maybe it's because they've been hurt by people claiming to speak for Jesus. It means standing up for things that we claim to believe and, and not just doing it on a Sunday morning from the comfort of places like this one. And we can't do it sitting where we are. There's just too much hurt out there. There's too much suffering out there. There are too many people in this world who have been attacked by an improperly weaponized Bible. There are too many people that believe in this world that they've already fallen so far from God's love that there's no way to get their way back, that there's no way that they are redeemable anymore. There are too many kids whose parents have disowned them for not conforming to their ideas and their ideals. There are too many people turning to self-harm or even worse, because they just don't feel worthy of love by anyone, but especially not by God. There are too many people of all ages, of all backgrounds, that are afraid to express themselves who they truly are for fear of judgment, or worse, violence, and even death. We have to go. And maybe you need some tools. Maybe, maybe, maybe my role as your pastor is to help equip you with those tools. Maybe we got to get you those clever little invitation cards and use them all the time. Make sure you're equipped with them each and every week. Maybe you need a really uh, cool t-shirt that has the logo on it and a, and a witty saying that will make you feel more comfortable and confident. Or maybe you need a couple of those Starbucks gift cards that we offer to new people and hand them to you so you can take your friend out to coffee because Maybe it's a financial burden for you to help tell the story. Maybe that'll help sweeten the deal. Maybe you need a workshop here at the church or online to help you get more comfortable telling your story. Maybe the church just needs to give an iPhone away every single week for a whole month uh, in order to get people excited and give them kind of an incentive to get them in the door. I gotta say, most of those aren't bad ideas. I don't think we can promise them all I got to be honest, I I don't think the iPhone thing is going to happen. I don't think it's in the budget this year. But the thing that we all need the most, we actually have in abundance. The thing that this world needs in the most is something we have in abundance. We have you. People who care 
deeply about this world and people who already feel deeply the depths of God's love for them. And they have this story within them of a God who has already broken into the world, who has already broken into their lives to let them know, hey, you are loved, you are forgiven, you are free. And so now you get to go tell the story. It's people like you, it's people like me going out and talking to our friends, our neighbors, our, our co-workers, and even our family members. It's people like you who, whether you can fully understand it or articulate it enough, carry the greatest story in the history of creation. The most transformative and universe-shattering story ever told of a God who so loved the world that sent his son to us, to live for us, to die for us, and to rise again for us. And that same son that Jesus tells us, go, go. Tell that story. Teach people what you've learned in places like this one. Not so that you can earn or so that you'll finally deserve God's love, but so that somebody who doesn't understand the depths of God's love for them can hear it. And maybe even for the first time, maybe somebody who has spent their whole life feeling unworthy, unjustified, unforgivable, unloved, can feel and hear that love has already made them and that love has already found them in God. That God, who is love, knows them by name and can't wait for them to know about it and can't wait for them to realize it, maybe for the very first time. So let's go. Let's tell the story. Let's serve those in need. Let's invite them in to this incredible thing that is God's love. Just go. Just go.